Welcome to Thoroughbred Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak and happy Preakness Day. The second jewel of the Triple Crown is taking place today and Gulfstream has all the action for you in our simulcast room silks where you can watch and wager on everything at Pimlico plus our own live racing card. We have 10 races on tap today including the featured Gracie Handicap which features Little Michelle making her second start back off an extended layoff for trainer Carlo Vacareza. Let's get right to the great Great racing. Here are the track and weather conditions for today's card. We have a fast main track and a firm turf course this Preakness Saturday. The first race is a $6,250 claimer. Four-year-olds and upward will be going seven furlongs on the main track. No scratches or jockey changes to report in the opener. Racing at Gulfstream. From the outside, Beantown Skipper begins nicely. My brother Johnny A from down toward the inside and Pro Gold from the top shelf. Courage belongs, splits horses. He's away in the top flight, and so is the veteran Jess Jebica. Four horses across the track in the run down the backstretch. With the lead, my brother Johnny A, a half a length in front of Courage Belongs, and from between them, Jess Jebica. Stretch of two and a half to Pro Gold, then Beantown Skipper. First race favorite, smoking the field, moves up on the inside. A length better than Keener Velos, and Super Doc does his best running later. He's last of all after a 23 second opening quarter. My brother Johnny A leads it by a length and a half. Courage belongs his second. Jess Jebica and Arterburn shuffled off heels. They're back racing third. About to be engaged on the outside by Beantown Skipper. Then smoking the field. He has six or seven lengths to make up but he is moving forward and he has inside position with five sixteenths to go. Courage belongs on the outside. Just ran up and took the lead. My brother Johnny A is back to second at the five sixteenths. Three in front of Beantown Skipper. Gaffleone is asking him to do some work. He moves up on the outside. Three quarters or the a half mile and 46 and one, and they're at the top of the stretch. Beantown Skipper comes to call on the outside of the leader, Courage Belongs. From the back, smoking the field, running on with five lengths to raise and an eighth of a mile to raise it. With the lead now, Beantown Skipper roused to the front. Back to second is Courage Belongs, but he's fighting on. Back third is smoking the field, but Beantown Skipper and Gaffleon, they have the lead, and Beantown Skipper to keep kick off the Preakness program with a length win. Courage Belongs is second, smoking the field is third. One of the back markers got fourth it's a photo between smart super doc and keener below beantown skipper takes the first race tyler gaffleone was in the irons for trainer tamara levy and owners iab staples beantown skipper paid ten dollars and twenty cents to win that'll take us right to the second race this is a twelve thousand five hundred dollar maiden claimer phillies and mares three-year-olds and upward will be going a mile on the main track Scratch the seven, Tartalita. And they're up. Hear me, Per breaks running, but moves to the outside to try to take the early lead from Canary Green, who's taken in hand to be second. Spiritual Leader comes away in the top flight and driving it up on the inside, Mini Falada. Mini Falada now moving to challenge the leader, Hear Me Per, and Canary Green is away in the top flight. Spiritual Leader also was right there for Harry Hernandez. So they're four across the track. That's good news for Amaluna. She has pace to chase, and she's fifth behind the speed. Two lengths in front of an outside running Valid Wildfire and La Dominadora is last of all, and they won an opening quarter in 24 and 2. Down the back stretch they go, and Spiritual Leader leads, but just narrowly. Up on the outside, Canary Green is second, Hear Me Per third. Many is now racing in fourth in front of the favorite Amaluna fifth. Two and a half to Valid Wildfire in sixth, and the trailer is La Dominadora. They approach the half mile pole now with the lead. It's still Spiritual Leader by a neck. Up on the outside in second is Canary Green. They won a 48 and one half mile. Racing third is Hear Me Purr from Amaluna fourth. Backing up now is Mini Falda getting passed by Valid Wildfire. La Dominadora is still last of all with three furlongs left to go. Spiritual Leader has the lead. On the outside, Canary Green is second, but Amaluna comes to call on the outside. Here's Amaluna into third, soon into second, and now up for the lead. Past the quarter mile pole, Amaluna just ran up to take the lead from Spiritual Leader who's trying to offer a challenge while second. Canary Green bows out. La Dominadora from the back trying to run on for a share, but at even money, Amaluna's in front. Back second is Spiritual Leader, and the rest are left in the wake of Amaluna. She's long gone. Amaluna and Diego Gomez moving clear in the late stages. They'll win the second, and they'll win it stylishly. They're still moving off, and they're 10 or 12 in front. Amaluna in a jog. Up second, Valid Wildfire, Spiritual Leader third, then Canary Green and La Dominadora. Emma Luna is a runaway winner in the second race. She takes this one with Diego Gomez in the irons. Manuel Estevez was the winning trainer for owners Carolina Stable. Emma Luna returned $4.20 for her victory. 
point of entry would not be denied. And they're into the stretch. Point of entry's taking the lead. Point of entry, a two-length lead. It's point of entry taking the lead. Point of entry will go to the Breeders' On Cup. On a five-race winning streak. Five-time grade one winner from a deep Phipps family. With a pedigree and physical to become the heir of Dynaformer. Point of entry. Standing at Adina Springs. The third race is a $25,000 claimer. Phillies and mares three-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races, four three-year-olds will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the four, Tripoca. And they're up. Dissimilar was off a step slow. Queen of the Spa wins the break and goes looking for the lead. Wild card hit is showing speed. Aunt Karina moves up the challenge and toward the inside. Jody Gale's away fourth, but only about a length and a half behind. The trailer early is DeSimazar, separated by three and a half as they run to the half mile pole. It's Queen of the Spa in front by a length. Aunt Karina is there second. From the outside and third is Wild Card hit with Joni Gale fourth and pocketed up. DeSimazar fifth and last, but two and a half behind as they run around the far turn. They went the opening quarter in a cozy 23 and two. Three furlongs left to go. It's Queen of the Spa in front by a half a length. And Karina is now second to Simazar. Moving up on the outside from last. She's into second now. Joni Gale is now the trailer while put to the stick. And Queen of the Spa is the leader. Queen of the Spa goes to the top of the stretch, widening on a two-length lead. From the outside to Simazar is second. Joni Gale coming up the inside lane. But Queen of the Spa is traveling well to the top of the stretch run. Queen of the Spa, three and a half lengths in front. Joni Gale tries to get after a second. From the outside to Simazar is now third. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Joni Gale starting to get to the leader, Queen of the Spa. Queen of the Spa leading. Joni Gale surging. Joni Gale coming at Queen of the Spa. It's a photo finish. Queen of the Spa inside. Joni Gale on the outside in 112 and 4. Queen of the Spa just holds off a fast closing Joni Gale to take the third race. Eddie Castro was aboard for trainer Efren Loza Jr. and owner Anthony DePaula. Queen of the Spa paid $4.60 to win. On to the fourth race now. This is a $30,000 claimer. Phillies and mares three-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races, will be going a mile on the turf course. A field of eight set to go to the post. And they're up. Barry Blitz was off awkwardly. Ali Cruz, the favorite, was away well and moves to try to take the early lead. Here's Sweet Mary moving to challenge. Sweet Mary will take the lead and the run in front of us the first time. Ali Cruz taken in hand by Gonzalez to race second with Who's That Chick next. Then it's on the outside to Hypno. Why does the Vol Caribbean Princess behind the speed so silver opposite day up the inside? And Barry Blitz is last of all after that subpar break. They run around the first turn, and Sweet Mary has the lead up on the outside. Hypno guts up to be second now. From third is Ali Cruz. Then who's that chick? Held up between horses, but only three behind is So Silver to the outside in Caribbean Princess. Then to the inside, it's opposite day. It's a stretch of another two and a half lengths back to Barry Blitz at the back. They run now to the top back stretch run after a 24 and one opening quarter time, and with the lead, it's still. Sweet Mary by an neck. Up and on the outside and chow challenging is Hypno second. Ali Cruz is third. And then it's a stretch of another half length to Caribbean Princess. So Silver to the outside of her as they run now to the far turn run. 48 and two for a half mile. And with the lead, it's still Sweet Mary. Up on the outside here is Ali Cruz to take it to her now. Ali Cruz is into second. From between horses, Hypno, who's that chick is next, followed by So Silver. Then from the backfield, it's Caribbean Princess. Opposite day held up and Barry Blitz is last. Top of the lane, three quarters, 112. And one, and the leaderness now, Ali Cruz, sets sail for home in front, has not put away Sweet Mary, and running on from the back here is Opposite Day. Opposite Day coming on under a full head of steam and right on by. Opposite Day and Jose Caraballo moving clear. Ronnie Werner to the winner's circle at Goldstream. Opposite Day by three. Ali Cruz second, Sweet Mary third, then who's that chick fourth? Opposite Day runs down the field to take the fourth race. Jose Caraballo was the winning jockey for trainer Ronnie Werner, who also owns a portion of this filly, with Rick Brock, Helen Burnett, Kenneth Posey, and Brian Salyer.
On to the fifth race now. This is a $12,500 claimer. Three-year-olds and upward, which have not won three races or which have not won a race since January 1st, will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. Scratch the five and the 10. And they're off. Rearing at the beginning was no brag, all fact. From the inside, Holy Smoke begins the best and goes looking for the lead. Caminito in the center is showing speed. Live and Joy is tugging at Castro, racing third on the outside and wanting to do more. These top three have opened up four lengths on HMS Anniversary. Then it's no brag all fact with My Nobleman on the inside. Global Glow is second last in the early trailer, Becky's Kitten. They run around the first turn and Holy Smoke has everything his own way in the early stages, leads it by two and a half. Caminito is there second, Live and Joy on the outside third, still tugging, racing about three behind. Another two and a half lengths to no brag all fact. Global Glow splits horses toward the inside. That's HMS Anniversary. Then it's a stretch of two and a half to My Nobleman and on his outside the trailer, Becky's Kitten. They want the opening quarter in 24 and one down the back stretch they go. No pace to pressure to speak of for Holy Smoke. He's four on top. Caminito is there second. Live and Joy a bit better to handle third within four lengths of the lead. Boulanger has moved Global Go to the inside to race in fourth now with five lengths to raise. A four length margin to no brag all fact then HMS anniversary. Second last now is Becky's Kitten and My Nobleman last of all as they take it around the far turn. Now the pace quickens. Holy Smoke continues to lead after a 47 and two half mile. Caminito on the outside is second. Three wide out there is Live and Joy. Behind the speed from fourth is Global Glow. Needs a little racing room for Boulanger. These top four are the only four with the top of the stretch in front of them. And their leader now is Global Glow on the inside. Holy Smoke. Global Glow looks for room and toward the outside. It's Live and Joy from between them. Caminito splits horses and Caminito's up for the lead. Global Glow has room now if he can quicken through toward the outside and Live and Joy then Holy Smoke. Eighth of a mile to go. Caminito still there on the inside and Global Glow takes a final run at him but Caminito's a winner. It's Caminito and Tyler Gaffley on three parts of a length. Second Global Glow, then Live and Joy and HMS Anniversary ran on to get fourth. They covered the course in 141 and four. Caminito gets the victory in the fifth race, giving jockey Tyler Gaffley his second win of the day. Bernardo Lopez was the winning trainer for owners Ikevara Stable Inc. Caminito paid $6 to win. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. OBS, the two-year-old source. 17 OBS sales graduates and counting have won graded stakes in 2015, including grade one winners Carpe Diem and Jack Milton. Don't miss the next opportunity to purchase a quality two-year-old at the OBS June sale. The sale that produced two-time Breeders' Cup mile winner Golden Sense and Florida Horse of the Year Wildcat Red. Over 1,100 two-year-olds and horses of racing age will be offered. OBS, we measure success by performance. That'll bring us to the sixth race. This is a maiden special weight. Three-year-olds and upward will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the seven, CP Warrior. And they're up. From the outside, Sarloff begins the best and goes looking for the lead. From the center, Son of a Derby winner moves up, and first-timer Son of a Derby winner has the lead. Here's a fellow firster. More applause from down toward the inside to be second in front of Sarloff, who's now back racing third. Stretch of another three-and-a-half length back to Enfiteron, and then it's another length and a half. The two trailers are on Bridled Him, and High Quality Prince is last of all and eight lengths behind Son of a Derby winner. Son of a Derby winner moves into the far turn in front by a half a length up on the outside. Sarloff is now second, tightening the pressure on this leader now. A length and a half back to more applause, who's third with two and a half lengths to make up. It's a stretch of another five lengths back to Amphiteron. He's ridden hard by Carabao to gain into the race with five sixteenths to go. Son of a Derby winner on the inside, Sarloff on the outside. They arrive at the quarter pole in lockstep. Two and a half lengths to more applause, third, and they're at the top of the stretch. 45 and three a half mile. And on the outside, it's Sarloff with a short lead toward the inside. Son of a Derby winner battles back second. Down the outside, more applause has still got a shot. He's third and coming on. Eighth of a mile to go. Sarloff takes the lead. Son of a Derby winner fights right back. Down the outside and more applause. Three chances. Sarloff short lead. Son of a Derby winner and more applause. Sarloff in front. 
More Applause was third in front there, behind Son of a Derby winner second in 111 and two. Sarlip prevails in the sixth race. Harry Hernandez was aboard for trainer Gustavo Delgado and owner's Grupo 7C Racing Stable. Sarlip paid $9.40 to win. The seventh race is an allowance with an optional claiming tag of $25,000. Three-year-olds and upward will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. A field of eight set to go to the post. They're off. From the outside, Arch Avenger begins nicely in the center. Whisper on the wind is showing speed here quickly to challenge is Brown's Gap. Brown's Gap and Silver Lucky Q, the first two. Taken in hand third is Whisper on the wind. Rain back to run behind this early skirmish. A length and a half in front of Racetrack Romance. Then it's Arch Avenger. Down to the inside, it's Poco Man. It's a stretch of another two and a half lengths back. Second last awesome attack in Grand Isle. Last of all, as they run around the first turn. Brown's Gap is engaged on the inside by Silver Lucky Q. They're in lockstep and trying to back down the pace. Racing third, Whisper on the wind, only a length and a half from it. They went a quarter in 23 and 2. Racetrack Romance on the outside, fourth a length better than Poco Men with an inside lane fifth. Arch Avenger is next, Grand Isle second last and trailing the field is Awesome Attack. Trying to slow things down on the top end, field taking closer order as they go to the half mile pole. Silver Lucky Q leads it by a half a length. Brown's Gap is second, Whisper on the wind. Has room but doesn't want to go yet after a 48 and one half mile. Racing in fourth on the outside, Racetrack Romance, then Poco Man and Arch Avenger. Awesome Attack is second last and Grand Isle is now last, but he's only six lengths behind as they run around the far turn. Brown's Gap on the outside, Silver Lucky Q on the inside, not much change in the plot. On the outside in Racetrack Romance now, third, Whisper on the wind. Gets a little scrub here from Rios, wants to keep him down inside for a clear shot. Then it's Arch Avenger and Poco Man and they run to the top of the stretch. Brown's Gap has the lead, Silver Lucky Q is second, Racetrack Romance up and on the outside now, third from fourth is Whisper on the wind. Poco Man and Panici getting off the fence with Arch Avenger carried wide. Top of the lane, many chances. Racetrack Romance just took the lead. Whisper on the wind, stop cold. Poco Man begins to run on from the back. Here's Poco Man trying to get Racetrack Romance who has the lead. Racetrack Romance hanging on. Poco Man and Silver Lucky Q and Arch Avenger in 141 and two. Racetrack Romance gets the win in the seventh race. Eddie Castro was aboard for trainer Marcio Navarro and owner Julian DeMora. Racetrack Romance paid $15 to win. The eighth race is a $12,500 claimer. Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races, will be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. A field of 11 will go to the post. And they're up to a level beginning. From the top shelf, Turf Fast is away the best and goes looking for the early lead. Toward the inside, Gato Dorado has speed on the stretch out. Ellicottville will be spun five or six wide in the run of the first turn, taking up there just briefly with successful Diva with calm reply away in that top flight. They sort themselves out for position around the first turn run, and Turf Fast leads it by a length and a quarter. Gato Dorado comes off the fence to be second. Sakar is now third in front of Ellicottville and fourth, and it's calm reply fifth. Successful Diva on the outside. Two and a half lengths back to the Princess as it's Princess Romana on the outside of Princesa Mia. Then it's a length back to the outside. Go Rontos, go Sartorian three wide. And the trailer is Jazz Band Joe. They went a quarter in 23 and three. Down the back stretch they run. Turf fast on top by two and a half. Racing second is Gato Dorado, Sakar third. Up on the outside, Ellicott Villas had to cover ground, but she's in touch fourth with three lengths to make up. Then it's successful Diva followed by Calm Reply. Princess Romana gets underway, moving up on the outside and three wide to challenge is Sartorian. Tori in. It's a stretch of another two lengths back to the outside. Go Rontos go. Then Jazz Banjo and Princess Mia last of all. And they still have to track down this long shot. Turf fast. Turf fast on the board at 35 to 1 after a 47 and 3 half mile. Here's Sikar moving up on the outside for Castro. From the backfield Ellicottville continues to just chip away at that one pace. Three sixteenths to go. Turf fast. Digging in. Finding more up top. Sikar is second. Ellicottville on the outside. Princess Romana rolling up the fence. Turf fast almost there. Princess Romana is next. Jazz Banjo down the extreme outside, but the upset is on. Turf Fast is hanging on. Turf Fast, the winner, close second. Maybe another long shot, Princess Romana. Turf Fast at 35 to 1 pulls the upset in the eighth race. Christian Dominguez was aboard for trainer Jamie Mejia and owner's Thoroughbred Champion Training Center, LLC. Turf Fast returns $73.60 for the win. Hope you had that one on your ticket.
Glad to have you back with us. Let's get to the ninth race. That's today's feature, the $60,000 Gracie Handicap. Billy's and Mare's four-year-olds in Upward will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. And they're off in the Gracie. Fascinante was a step slow. From the outside, Double Secret begins nicely. Perfect Step is showing speed. Fascinante finds her feet, now moves up on the inside to put ahead in front. Perfect Step and Joanne's Wildcat will accompany her second and third. She's spooky now fourth. Then to the outside, it's Double Secret, My Sweet Dove between them. Little Michelle is on the inside, and Trio of Mischief is last of all as they speed into the far turn. Fascinante with Jesus Rios up, leads it by a length from Perfect Step second. Up on the outside, Joanne's Wildcat now third from She's Spooky fourth. My Sweet Dove, long shot on the inside, trying to weave through traffic fifth. Little Michelle is in tight sixth. Double Secret is seventh. Trio of Mischief is last, but anybody's race from here, and they're at the top of the stretch. Fascinante has the lead by a length and a half. Little Michelle trying to work off the fence down the outside. She's spooky is coming on, and Trio of Mischief from last. Fascinante almost there. Little Michelle working closer now. Fascinante reaching. So Little Michelle surging. It's a photo finish. Really, really close on the money. Fascinante inside. Little Michelle on the outside. They came to the wire too close to call and 55 and two. Little Michelle wins a very exciting edition of the Gracie Handicap, nabbing Fascinante at the wire to prevail in a very close photo. Tyler Gaplione gets his third win of the day. This one is for trainer Carlo Vaccareza and owner Priscilla Vaccareza. Little Michelle paid $11.20 to win. The final race on Saturday's card is a $12,500 maiden claimer. Three-year-olds and upward will be going a mile on the turf course. Scratch the six, untie the knot. And runners away. Good start toward the outside for Bosco Bob's Baby, who breaks for the lead. Moving up on the inside of him is Drimmer. Also showing speed is our Mystical Man. These three are quickest. Gronk is a bit headstrong. He's tugging up on the outside for Panici. Three wide, a joint fourth. Speed read toward the inside and world-class kitten from between them. Then it's a length and a half back to Fossenfeld. He's three wide toward the inside, Majestic Z. Splitting horses there was four Zs in the run around the first turn. Then it's a gap of another length and a half back to Resurrect Quono and trailing the field is Bosco Bob's baby. Farther back, the trailer Caballero first. Down the back stretch they go. Drimmer leads it by a length. Up on the outside, Bosco Bob's baby second. Mythical Man is now third. World Class Kitten is fourth. Three wide fifth is Gronk. Then it's a length and a half to Speed Read with four Zs on his outside. Followed by Majestic Z, then Fossenfeld. It's a stretch of another four to Rissoweke Chrono. He's hard ridden but second last and trailing the field a long way. Caballero first. They take it to the half mile after a 48 and three half mile time with the lead. Drimmer Trimmer at 30 to 1 has the lead. Bosco Bob's baby on the outside is second. Vergara Jr. has horse here with a, our mythical man. He's third. Up on the outside in world class kitten. Speed read unwinds from the back. Grog calls it an afternoon. And they move to the top of the stretch. Three quarters, 112 and 3. Mejia's trying to pull off another shocker, and Drimmer has the lead. Our mythical man comes off cover to try to track him down second. Down the outside in speed read with Bosco Bob's baby. Here's our mythical man and Octavio Vergara Jr. to take the lead. Speed Speed Reed moves at him on the outside second. Our Mythical Man almost home, and he's a winner. Our Mythical Man to win it. Speed Reed second, Drimmer third, close fourth between four Zs and Bosco Bob's baby. Our Mystical Man prevails in the Saturday finale. Octavio Vergara Jr. was aboard for trainer Ron Gaffney and owner Emmy Gaffney. Our Mystical Man paid $36.80 to win. And speaking of payoffs, let's get to the results of our exotic wagers. Here's how they paid today. The pick four, three of four, paid $573.05. The pick five, four of five, paid $962. No one hit the pick five, so there will be a carryover going into Sunday of $17,316.85. The Rainbow Six, five of six, paid $10,939.28. The Rainbow Six will carry over into Sunday as well. The carryover stands at $112,752.11. There will also be a super high five carryover tomorrow, so you better be here, $7,536.48. That's going to do it for Saturday's card. We are right back at it tomorrow on Sunday with nine more races. First post is 1 o'clock p.m. 
plenty of great fields, but I'm really intrigued by the seventh race. It's a maiden special weight for fillies and mares. They're going to be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. And this field includes a filly named Fusaiichi Red, has yet to finish off the board for trainer George Weaver. She'll be making her second start back off an extended layoff, finished third last time out in a very encouraging performance. And this one has plenty of back class. She finished second to Condo Commando in her debut. Condo Commando, a filly that would go on to win the grade one spin away in her next start and is now a three-time graded stakes winner who just ran in the Kentucky Oaks. Another intriguing filly in this race, going to be making her three-year-old debut and debuting for the Gustavo Delgado Barn. That one is Beauty Sisters. This one hasn't raced in more than nine months, but as a two-year-old, she ran against the boys and finished third behind International Star, who was just scratched from the Kentucky Derby, but won the Louisiana Derby. Talk about some back class. We'll see how that one does when debuting as a sophomore. We also have a couple of intriguing first-time starters from the Ralph Nix Barn, who always does well with his young horses, especially in maiden special weights, always boasts high numbers. So this is going to be a great betting race, and we might see some very talented fillies with promising futures ahead. Definitely ones to watch tomorrow and down the road. I'll see you right back at here tomorrow on Sunday. Thanks for watching Thoroughbred Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak.